Hi, this is Joan. And uh, before I say anything else, what I usually forget to say is please like, share, and subscribe. Okay, what you're looking at is the book of Lamech of Cain and Leviathan. So I wanted to read this right from the beginning um, because I wanted to tie all this into the launching of Beyonce's new audio album, Black is King. Now you might be wondering, what in the world does one have to do with the other? Well, uh, keep listening and I will try to get to the point as quickly as possible. Okay, this reads the book of Lamech of Cain and Leviathan. Now I have the actual book and there's not a lot of, usually I like to go to Wikipedia, but there is no a Wikipedia section on this yet. So what I'll read is this from Goodreads. And it says there are two different books of Lamech available to Bible scholars. One follows the line of Seth to the father of Noah and one does not. Instead, the other follows the Lamech that came from the line of Cain. The book of Lamech of Cain has been historically hard to find until recently. Presented in novella form, Father Ichabod Sargent and his translation team have been cleared by the Vatican to publish this antediluvian document. Written before the flood of Noah, the book of Lamech of Cain follows the antediluvian bloodline of Cain and presents answers to questions that have puzzled biblical scholars such as the Mark of Cain, the Song of the Sword, and the history of Noah's wife Nama for thousands of years. Editor Demon has once again brought forward the dark and the ancient as he did with Father Esau Martin with the Lost Book of King Og, which is another book I plan on reading at some point. Okay, but the point is I have the actual book here on Kindle, and I have been looking at certain parts of it, and as the introdu introduction I just read said, it does give you a lot of answers to questions you might have had reading the first few chapters of the book of, Gen of Genesis. Okay, so uh, the last video I did, I tried to answer some questions about Naama, uh, specifically that I had said in passing that Naama was a mixed race singer. And this particular document, this book, uh, the book of Lamech of Cain, basically spells that out for you and a lot of people have who really praise the book of Jasher run right over that that it tells you that she was the only person who was from both the line of Seth and Cain she was mixed race and she was a singer who was considered very very beautiful now this is found in this book in chapter 8 where it says Naama's secret. Now, and Lamech had a daughter by his wife Zillah named Naama. And Naama was born pale and not with the complete mark of the line of Cain. Naama was beautiful and pleasant before the eyes of all and known in the city of Enoch for his singing. Now if you read the book of Genesis, it tells you to study the time before the flood but the problem is it doesn't give you very much information it just tells you there were giants in those days so this book does give you some more information about what was going on back then so this is the you see it's page 22 of this book and what I want to do is just read a few pages of you and then compare them to information you'll find in the book of Proverbs and also in the book of Revelation. Okay, the evils and violence of the land. And there was violence on the earth and violence in all things. For there were less women and the men continu continually sought strange flesh for gratification. The wrath of living things was a force that the earth had never seen. Evil spread like locusts resting upon every part of the land and there never will be evil such as that again. Men then uncovered the nakedness of their fathers and their mothers. They uncovered the nakedness of their brothers and sisters and the nakedness of their own children. And men approached their blood relatives to uncover their nakedness, sharing all that was carnal within their family. 
and the prize was to uncover a woman's nakedness during her menstrual impurity. They were more carnal than any man who had ever walked the earth ever since, for they did not have the understanding of man, for carnal men know and fools understand. Blood sacrifices were offered with leaven, for the bread of wickedness was fresh, and the wine of violence intoxicated all living things, and curses fell from the mouths of men and into the earth throughout the day and night, and the earth was burnt from the wickedness, and the desolation grew as men cursed all, cursing their fathers, and women cursed their mothers, and all that lived cursed and blasphemed all, for the wicked loved the violence with all their souls, and violence covered them like a garment. Lamech warns Nama of the sons of God, and Lamech warned Nama with these words, Beware the sons of God, my daughter, stay away from them, for their intentions to you are not of this earth. And Nama said, Do you not govern all of this land with your Leviathan? Am I not safe if I eat bread and let my heart be merry with the sons of God? Nama and the sons of God. And Amma was seduced by those whose genital organs were the size of a beast of the field, and whose ejaculate was like that of a horse. And Amma lusted after the sons of God. And Lamech, Dubal Cain, Jabal, and Jubal all gnashed their teeth and ground their jaws and dreamed of death and revenge upon the Nephilim. And Amma did worship the sons of God, as was the practice at that time. And she did practice divination, spells of resurrection with them. And men, and that changed into beasts and beasts changed into men and men yielded to the beasts and the birds to lie with them and the men were raped mightily and those between the land of the dead and the living that made it them as well and the gantiqua was among them and men came into the beast and the beast came into men and the earth groaned for all the sexual deviancy and the ama chose to lay with them and they treated her as a whore, and she became a whore of the daughters of Cain, and the price for the imperious whore was the price of a loaf of bread. Now I'm going to come back to it, but I wanted to contrast that with what you'll find in Proverbs. Now this is Proverbs 6, and I want to go and start at Proverbs 22. So it says, When thou goest, it shall lead thee. Let me see, maybe I should start a little further up okay let's start at 20 my son keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother bind them continually upon thine heart and tie them about thy neck when thou goest it shall lead thee when thou sleepest it shall keep thee and when thou awakest it shall talk with thee for the commandment is a lamp and the law is light and reproofs of instruction are the way of life to keep thee from the evil woman from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman lust not after the beauty in thine heart neither let her take thee away with her eyelids for by means of a whorish woman a man is brought to a piece of bread and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned Okay, now that particular verse I'm looking at is where it compared a whorish woman. That it says she has been, excuse me, it says that for by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread. Okay, and when you go back to Kindle, it tells you that Naama could be purchased basically for the for a loaf of bread now the reason why that was interesting to me is because i used to read that with my ex-husband and i always come to, we couldn't figure out is it saying that she is is purchased for the price of a loaf of bread that's all you had to do for her or is it saying that it reduces the man to a, a loaf of bread basically what it's telling you when you read the rest of the story is that they were eating people they were practicing cannibalism and if you wanted her you gave her some of the bread you made from from some of the blood so um i just you know what you're reading here is what the bible is telling you is going to happen i believe before the end so let me continue and if i'm wrong please you know correct me gently because i'm not trying to be wrong I'm just trying to see exactly what is 
what's happening. And uh, I think, let me see if I can find it, but I think it said something about them eating blood or eating bread made with blood. Okay, it was on page 22, and it uh, tells you, I had just read it, that uh, in verse 21, blood sacrifices were offered with leaven, for the bread of wickedness was fresh, and the wine of violence intoxicated all living things. Okay, so when they talk about Naama, Naama, um, well, a prostitute being, you can have a prostitute, and specifically Nama, for the price of bread. They're talking not just about regular bread, but bread that was um, made with blood sacrifices. And you might have heard some speculation or uh, gossip maybe even on the news about, not the news, but, you know, the... The internet news basically about celebrities and things and blood sacrifices and uh, this is again this story if you believe it or not well actually whether you it being truthful doesn't depend on you believing it but um, if it is truthful then this is something that has gone back all the way almost to the garden because Cain I believe was the seventh six or seventh in line from from the garden so this these practices are nothing new just like solomon said even back in his day there's nothing new under the sun and there's nothing new under the sun even now okay so i wanted to give you some more information about the antediluvian world as reported by lamech in his book and so i'm going to continue reading page 23 and verse 37 and naama chose to lay with them and they treated her as a whore and she became a whore of the daughters of cain and the price for the imperious whore was the price of a loaf of bread and all the sons of god committed fornication and lived deliciously with her for naama was both a deep ditch and a narrow pit and as a whore deriding a gift she mocked leviathan openly okay what i want to do is show you that this is this loaf of bread shows up in proverbs and then where it says she lived they lived deliciously with her that really does sound a lot like revelation okay but let me keep going and one day naama was in the open square drunk with the blood of the sons of god for they served it to her in ornate chalices and La and lamech saw her and wondered with great admiration for giants and men and sons of god all mingled with the naama okay now again look at this expression wondered with great admiration does it sound familiar to you well let me show you where you'll find it in the Bible. Now, this is Revelation 17, and compare it to what you've been told about Naama in the book of Lamech. And there came out of the seven angels, I'm sorry, and there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness and i saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy having seven heads and ten horns and the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication and upon her forehead was a name written mystery babylon the great the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth and i saw a woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of jesus and when i saw her i wondered with great admiration and the angel said unto me wherefore didst thou marvel i will tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her which hath the seven heads and ten horns okay let me skip all that and get back to where it talks about her and the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth now in the video prior to this i did 
think I demonstrate. Well, actually, you can even find it in here that Naama did marry. Okay. Naama did marry Noah. Okay. Okay. And um, so if you consider that the only people left on the earth after the flood was no Noah, Naama, his three sons, and their three wives. Okay. He would have been like the king. So she would have been like a queen reigning over all the other the few other people who were there on earth and a uh, part of the point that i'm making is that for these images to be in the bible tells you that these were these were read these were familiar this story was familiar at the time the bible was written they already knew this so that the angel could go and show uh, John the Revel the Revelator this image and he would have some idea of where it came from and even the Savior quoted Lamech not Lamech Methushael let me see I'll show that to you too because I don't like just saying something to you and not proving it but I don't want to just keep flip-flopping and going back and forth all the time either so I'm trying to remember exactly what it was I was trying to say so let me see if I can find that for you okay again this is the book of Lamech and this is page 3 uh, verse 12 Lamech then asked and who did my ancestor Cain take from Nod as a wife that she conceived and bore Enoch what is the name of this woman whom Cain met and Methushael stretched forth his hands toward the people of the city Enoch said who is my mother and who are my brethren behold my mother and brethren and behold those that surrounded them were in the hundreds with marked skin okay you will find a similar quote from the savior in the bible hold on let me pull that up for you okay now this is matthew chapter 12 and this is the savior speaking and let me see okay let's start at 46 while he had talked to the people behold his mother and his brethren stood without desiring to speak with him then one said unto him behold my mother thy mother and thy brethren stand without desiring to speak with thee but he answered and said unto him that told him who is my mother and who are my brethren and he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said behold my mother and my brethren for whoever shall do the will of my father which is in heaven the same is my brother my sister and my mother okay so again the impression i'm getting is that this book that we're reading this uh book of lamech is new to us it's a new scroll but it was not new to the people in that time. They knew all about what was going on. Except that I think that when the Savior was speaking, he was speaking to his people in contrast to Methushael, where it makes a point of telling you, uh, and behold, those that surrounded him were in the hundreds with marked skin. Okay. So, um... I believe that I was on like page 24 and I was talking again about Laama. La I'm sorry, Naama. And I think it's actually pronounced Nama. I think I saw that somewhere. So um, I do like to get names pronounced correctly. But since I started with Naama for now, I think um, I'll just stick with that for now so uh, the point i'm making oh okay that is where i wanted to go now uh what i was looking at also was the description they gave of naama now they told you that she was pale but she was not as pale as her father was her father lamech because lamech had her by um 
I went over before from the book of Jasher that the Sethites were descendants of uh, of Seth and they looked like Noah and the Cainites looked more like the Seraphim or at least they looked like more like Cain who was said to have looked like a Seraphim or had sort of a certain a certain glow and Lamech had also said that the curse of Cain was paleness so Naama was described as pale but not as pale as Lamech because the curse that was put on Cain when it talked about you are cursed times seven it was not speaking of like what I always thought somebody would come hit him seven times or kill him seven times well, uh, basically what it's saying is seven generations. So she was, she brought in a new generation that would not be as pale. At least that is what I'm thinking of at the time. So what I was looking at was the description they give of her in verse 45, where it says, um, she wore her gold and pearls and set up on the waters and she was loved by all and none saw desolation when she was near and those that wanted to tear her clothes from her and eat her flesh all had a change of heart when they looked in her eyes and she took a harp and walked about the city of enoch singing like a forgotten whore and none remembered how she had sung before well let me go back and read yeah let me go back. I think I may have already read this, read this, but let me read it again at 42. And one day, Naama was in the open square, drunk with the blood of the sons of God, for they served it to her in ornate chalices. And Lamech saw her and wondered with great admiration. Okay, that expression again that you'll see in, that I just read in Revelation. For giants and men and sons of God all mingled with Naama. So basically, Naama got around. You know, there weren't many women around, and she kind of made up for that lack. Okay, you may be asking, well, what in the world does this have to do with Beyonce? Well, probably or possibly nothing, but that uh, description, when I, well, let me start off by saying I don't have anything against Beyonce. I'm not for or against her. It's kind of it's beyond a generational thing. I just don't pay singers more than passing attention. Not just singers, celebrities, entertainers. I might be able to recognize who this is, but I'm just not that, you know, into anybody that much. But, of course, there was a lot of hype about um, this album, this video album. And, you know, I actually, I heard some of the songs and I thought they were very uh, entertaining. But uh, what I was looking at is like some of the, um, well, I mean, look how impressive that this picture to me is really regal. And, um, but um, look at the what she's wearing and the description they gave of Naama very ornate dress and also notice that even though this is something this is titled black is king well where is the royalty what color is the royalty it, it's you know you could say it's black but if you compare beyonce black with the black around her i don't know i i just kind of think i don't think you might want to call both of them black you know one is kind of pale you know I'm just saying that, again, as Solomon said, history repeats itself. There's nothing new under the sun. I don't know if the people who made suggestions about this album also were reading uh, the Book of Lamech or Revelation, but the um, ornate style of dress does remind me very much of the woman uh, spoken of in Revelation. So, there is nothing new under the sun, and even though someone might say, oh, okay, well, look, she's being very, very nice to dark-skinned women. If you show yourself, in my opinion, if you show yourself in the middle of a group, 
and you say, okay, you put yourself in your right in the middle and you are noticeably different from the people around you and you're wearing a big crown. Well, it basically looks to me like you're a queen and these are your subjects. Your subjects are not your equals. They are the people who work for you. And uh, what does it say in Revelations? Well, let me see if I can pull that up for you. Well, you see, in the next chapter of Revelation, chapter 18, and you look at verse 7, how much she hath glorified herself, lived and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. So, to me, it looks kind of like um, Beyonce as some sort of symbol for Naama. I mean, um, a mixed race singer. Now, you might say, well, she's not mixed race. Well, you know, if you just look at her, she kind of looks like she could be. Um, her mother, to me... Uh, looks closer to your general description of white than black. And I, I know a lot of people go by the one drop rule, but that is truly not biblical. Just read the two very short books of Ezra and Nehemiah, and it shows that people's mothers and fathers had to be Israel before they could be accepted. So this ideal of one drop is the total opposite of what was taught back in biblical times. Now you will see all kinds of Hebrew Israelite camps saying just the opposite and totally ignoring those two books. But just because you ignore the truth doesn't mean it isn't the truth. Now, if they wanted to come out and say, we just don't like those books, like one guy said, hey, I'm quoting from the Bible. If you don't like what I'm saying, you know, tear the pages out of your Bible. Then, then you know, it won't be in your Bible, but it still will be in the Bible. Well, the books of Nehemiah and Ezra say that, you know, you have to meet certain criteria. So the timing of this uh, album coming out also to me is kind of telling. Because, you know, if she is being used as sort of a symbol for that Naama, who seems like she is being used as a symbol for uh, Mystery Babylon in Revelation, if you read what happens next in chapter, that same chapter, 18, it is not very pleasant. And uh, also the title, the fact that this is referencing the Lion King is also to me very telling. But uh, this is, um, this is Revelation 18 telling what's going to happen to Babylon the Great. And after these things, I'm not, I saw an, un I'm terribly sorry. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Let me explain right now. I'm not saying this about Beyonce. What I'm saying is I think that she is being used as kind of a symbol for Naama, who was a symbol for what's going to happen to a place. Okay, so let me continue. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works. And the cup which she hath filled, filled to her double. How much she hath glorified herself, and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, 
death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judges her. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her, when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar far off for the fear of her torment saying alas alas that great city babylon that mighty city for in one hour is thy judgment come and the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her for no man buyeth their merchandise any more the merchandise of gold and silver well anyway you pretty much get the gist so what i'm saying is why now you know all these things happening, this Black Lives Matter, which I'm convinced has almost absolutely nothing to do with black lives. Um, because, you know, as far as residences or neighborhood stores, the only people who were really messed up were black people. As far as I can see, maybe there were some exceptions, but I'm in Chicago and the neighborhoods the stores in black neighborhoods got messed up when black people tried to go to hispanic neighborhoods they were acting reacting violently because they didn't want their neighborhood stores messed up now some of downtown was was messed up but still generally as far as neighborhood stores as far as i can see the only ones that were messed up were black ones so how does that help black people this doesn't have to do have anything to do as far as I can see with or have much to do with black people. It seems to me to be something to hide. They're using blacks as a label to hide under. OK, again, opinion. I could be totally wrong. And if I am, I don't mind you saying, you know, you disagree. You can even give me reasons why you disagree for a fact that I truly prefer if you do. Someone just come, coming and saying you're wrong, but not saying how. I kind of feel like you're just wasting my time. And again, okay, uh, there was a mention of Naama dressing with pearls. Okay, and somewhere it talked about, about Naama on sitting on the waters. Okay. And you have her here on the beach. And purple is the color for royalty. You have her leading a group, as far as I can see, a group of darker skinned women. But she's in the lead. She's wearing purple. She is the queen. Now, even if you're the queen, you can say, you know, I'm the queen. But these people over here, they're beautiful, but they serve me. You're not on the same level. The same way that... uh if you look back at the story of of stop that stop that the story of Lilith and Eve I don't think Eve would ever consider I don't think Lilith would ever really totally share any power she had with Eve she just wouldn't what would be the point Okay, also, another thing I was looking at is how, uh, when they were talking about how the whole concept came up, well, actually, in the video, there are references to the Lion King. Now, I, myself, I watched it with my kids, the first one that came out, and I actually liked the Lion King. I thought it was harmless cute little story but then you know i saw a lot of people who were talking about this was actually the story of barack obama now i'll tell you the truth i don't really see how it's the story of barack obama it is um it was an interesting idea but i tend to have enough to do so that i don't really I'll see something in passing, keep it in mind, but not really investigate it too much. But when I saw that they were making references to it in this Black is King video, it made me immediately think, okay, you're making references to the Lion King. The Lion King had to do with Obama. And even though I myself tend to think of Obama as not black, as mixed, he's mixed. I'm not saying anything bad about mixed. I'm simply saying that he is not, um, both his parents were not black. One was white. So to me, that means he was mixed. But um, 
Still, I think that somehow that black is king is kind of a reference to Obama. Okay, it could be a big leap of faith, but then again, like I said, I do know a lot of people back a few years ago were talking about the Lion King had some reference to Obama. So, um, I can't play any of the videos about that because of how things are, but I did type in Barack Obama Lion King. So if anybody is interested in looking at any of that, um, you can see that. So basically what I'm saying is that I think that everything is significant. I think that the way that they're doing this Black Lives Matter thing now is significant. I think that um, the whole incident that started it was um, everything was planned. Now, when I say planned, I don't necessarily mean by humans, but it was planned by some extremely intelligent force that knows all about numbers and and when events are going to happen or whatever. So they're really only, well, there is the ultimate intelligent force and that is the most high and he knows everything and can, he's omnipotent and omniscient. But the devil wants very much to be like him. So he tries very hard to find out everything and he certainly knows more than any of us you know we get our power your power either comes from the most high or the most low is basically what i'm saying and things that are happening are happening from one force or the other now i saw the tape of uh, george floyd's murder and to me this also seem to be very very much staged rehearsed and you know i know at the time a lot of people were saying that they don't believe he died i do believe he died i even believe that he knew he was gonna die and uh, that that was why he was uh, struggling so hard in the back seat um i think that there are things going on in the background that we don't know about I think that there are events that are planned way in advance. And uh, as I said before, there's nothing new under the sun. When you saw uh, the book of Lamech, I just showed you where you think now these people are drinking blood. It's a new thing. No, it's very much not a new thing. Uh, even if you look at the word cannibal, cannibal is um, a compound of Cain and Abel because there is a theory that when Cain killed Abel, he ate at least part of him. Maybe even where it talks about the blood, where the Heavenly Father says the earth, his blood is crying out from the earth. Things that are happening now have always happened. I think that it's no, a no accident that this particular man who's, whose death prompted all the marching has very... Um, I don't know, you call it Negroid features, African features. He looks very much like if you said, what does a, a, the black people getting off the boat? Who do you have that looks as close to what we might have looked like when we first arrived in this country? I think that that would have been him. I think that's what he looks like. I think it's no accident that this occurred during the time of Gemini. You know, where you also have this football player who out of the blue, first he comes out and says black women suck. Then he comes out after this guy dies and produces pictures where he says, well, we were good friends. Lots of things, lots of really bizarre things are happening and they aren't happening at this time by accident. And neither is this particular video coming out by accident. As I, I believe I heard on Entertainment Tonight that uh, Beyonce said it took a year and a half. That's 18 months. That's six plus six plus plus six. And again, I could be wrong. I think that's what she said a year and a half. But the point is... Ultimately, that um, I believe that, yeah, we are definitely in the last days and we're looking at something that is about to occur. 
and that I believe is the fall of Babylon. I think that you're looking at the rug being pulled out from under you. And um, I'm not sure if the daily sacrifice being taken away means your food. But I have always said that the book of Isaiah, the first four or five chapters, pretty much sum up everything. And I, if you saw my older videos, you know, I quoted from it a lot. And I'm going to kind of wrap this up because I really didn't mean for it to go this long. But hold on, please. Okay, so uh, this is a chapter that I have quoted a lot. So let me do it again. This is Isaiah chapter 3. And to me, this is definitely a warning to uh, Hebrew Israelites, black people, whatever you want to call them. But um, let me just look at what's happening to your food supply. I mean, I'm not sure if, if we as a people, that is African Americans, are paying a lot of attention. But uh, the rug really is being pulled out from under you, from under us. And the fact that uh, we have so many, we have such division because the word tribulation means female rivalry. Just consider that, that um, you have so many black celebrities who just come out of the woodwork and start telling you, I can't stand black women. Well, it told you in Genesis that there was going to be en enmity between the descendants of the serpent and the descendants of the woman, and that everybody is basically going to have to pick sides, okay? So, um, this is Isaiah chapter 3, and I think this is what we are encountering now. For behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, Darts take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay and the staff, the whole stay of bread and the whole stay of water, the mighty man and the man of war, the judge and the prophet and the prudent and the ancient, the captain of fifty and the honorable man and the counselor and the cunning artificer and the eloquent order. And I will give children to be their princes. Now, I have wondered about that, ch children, but someone explained that by this word children, they mean immature people. And also, if you look at it astrologically, if you look at, um, look at President Trump, he is a Gemini. That is the sign of the child, two children, twins. Okay. Also, he has a rising, I believe, in in Leo, which uh, would certainly add strength, uh, vanity even, to whatever that sun was for those who are, you know, even a little bit into astrology. But let me continue. And I will give children to be their princes, and babes shall rule over them. And the people shall be oppressed, every one by another, and every one by his neighbor. Now, aren't we all being encouraged to report on our neighbors? To me, this started when they started saying, okay, don't, um, uh, make sure you tell on your neighbor if you suspect child abuse. Or if you suspect anything, make sure you tell, okay? So, uh, as it said, and the people shall be oppressed, every one by another, and every one by his neighbor. The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient, and the base against the honorable. Now, I know when I was teaching, the children caught on, and that was 10, 15 years ago. The children caught on pretty quickly to, okay, you better not say anything to me. I'll call such and such and so and so on you. Now, that's the children talking to the teachers which makes teaching a little bit more difficult. But things have gotten far worse than that. <clears throat> Excuse me, but let me continue. When a man shall take hold of his brother and of the house of his father, saying, Thou hast clothing, be thou our ruler, and let this ruin be under thy hand. And that day shall he swear, saying, I will not be a healer, for in my house is neither bread nor clothing. Make me not a ruler of the people. Okay, that is things have gotten so bad, people don't even want to admit to what they have because they don't want to be, well, personally, I think they may not want to be robbed. You know, if people, if 
the people are starving and you have a loaf of bread, you might not want the people to know you have a loaf of bread because you don't have enough to share and you don't want them tearing your house down trying to kill you to get what little you do have. But let me continue. For Jerusalem is ruined and Judah is fallen because their tongue and their doings are against the Lord to provoke the eyes of his glory. The show of their continence doth witness against them and they declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. Okay, again, this reference is to Sodom. It is not to, I can't stand those black women. This is to Sodom. The Heavenly Father is saying, these people are acting as they have done in Sodom. And in Sodom, they were not uh, venerating the women. The women were not ruling. They... Lot's daughter got killed in Sodom because she tried to help um, a traveler. So this ideal that all these, that the father hates women and the women should walk around shamefaced is not from the Most High or from the Savior. Now it may be from the Apostle Paul. I believe it was Paul or one of his followers who said women should walk around shamefaced. But if you read, it said through one man, sin entered the world, not through one woman. It was Adam that had direct correspondence with the heavenly father, not Eve. But let me continue. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. Say ye to the righteous that it shall be well with thee, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Woe unto the wicked, it shall be ill with them. For... Oops. Sorry about that. Woe unto the wicked. It shall be will ill with him. For the reward of his hands shall be given him. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err, and destroy the ways of their paths. Okay, now I think when they're talking, saying women here, I really don't think they're talking about black women because it would be contradictory. In one point, they even call the black women or the women of Israel the um, orphans and widows. Now, if a woman is a widow, she's generally not going to rule over anybody. If anything, I think that they're talking about women of other nations. And as I expressed already, children is talking about immature people now if children could be talking about immature people i think women may actually since he's already told you about sodom women may be referring to people who were not be defined as female according to the definition from the most high but let me continue O oh, my people they which lead thee cause thee to err and to destroy the way of thy paths the Lord standeth up to plead, and standeth to judge the people. The Lord will enter into judgment with the ancients of his people, and the princes thereof. For ye have eaten up the vineyard, the spoil of the poor is in your houses. Yep, our leaders have sold us out. And I think that when you have these people, these celebrities who come out, these black male celebrities who come out and say, can't stand them black women, don't want nothing to do with them black women, Black a black woman brings black days i think that this is also speaking of them okay the spoil of the poor is in your houses you enter into judgments with the angels of the people okay and the princes thereof they have eaten up the vineyard now i with kobe bryant i was not a fan or a not fan of him but i remember when he went to his prom with brandy and i thought oh okay that's really cute that's a nice couple and then he went and um married someone of another nation now a lot of the hebrews will say oh no she was a hebrew too no she wasn't again stop thinking that this is an open group it's not there are certain this this is a certain bloodline and everybody is not in it and like a supervisor once told me supervisor supervisor from an old job when everybody was 
crying over Michael Jackson. She was saying, well, I know when I, and this was a quote from her, when I was growing up, we spent our pennies to go buy his albums, him and his brothers. And what did he do? He went and gave all, when he died, all that money went right back into the white community. Now, I feel the same way about Kobe Bryant. Okay, it's I'm sad. You know, it's always a horrible thing when somebody dies. But your support came from a lot of black people, specifically black women. And when you went outside, you basically said, none of you is good enough for me. So my philosophy is, you reject me. I reject you right back. That does not mean I'm going to say anything bad about you. doesn't mean I hate you. It just means that you don't think much of me. I feel the same way about you. So anyway, let me continue. The spoil of the poor is in your houses. Okay, again, like she said, we went and spent our pennies on your albums. And what did you do? You went and gave all of it back to some non-black people. And that happens a lot. But uh, I digress. Let me move on. 15. What mean ye that ye beat my people to pieces and grind the faces of the poor, saith the Lord God of hosts? Moreover, the Lord saith, because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking with mincing as they go and making a tinkling with their feet. Therefore, the Lord will smite with the scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion and the Lord will discover their secret places. Now, I'm going to skip all that because, you know, there is some controversy where a lot of the Hebrew Israelites are quick to say, oh, he's talking about can't stand those black women. I disagree because at one point he's saying that he's mad at Israel for the treatment for making all these orphans and widows. So why would he come back later and, and say, I can't stand them either? That doesn't make sense. I don't think he's talking about them i think he's talking about possibly transgenders i'm not sure but it seems to me that the heavenly father made women to want to be pretty to want to dress up it even talks about um how the bride is adorned for her bridegroom so if that's the case why would he be mad at a woman for dressing up that's not logical and i believe like the hebrew israelites are always saying well the uh they aren't saying that the heavenly father is logical but they're always saying that men are logical well then wouldn't the most high be the most logical well anyway let me continue and it shall come nope well yeah let me read that this is 24 and it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell there shall be stink and instead of a girdle a rent and instead of well-set hair baldness and instead of a stomacher a girding of sackcloth and a burning instead of beauty. Thy men shall fall by the sword, and thy mighty in the war, and her gates shall lament and mourn, and she being desolate shall sit upon the ground. So I think that all these things happening at this same time is telling you, hey, this is no time for our men to be talking about how much they hate the women, how they can't wait till uh, the bad times come, the end comes so they can kill the women, which is like in total insanity. The Savior never ever said one unkind word about or to a woman, to a Hebrew Israelite woman. Uh, the one time he said something, that was to a Greek woman. So these people who are coming against the women, blaming the women for everything, are certainly sons of Adam, who, uh, even though that the man was given directly to him not to eat from this particular tree, when he was confronted with his failure to do as he was told, he immediately blamed the woman and even the Most High. Yeah, these guys are definitely acting like the sons of Adam after he fell, you know. So, um, I hope that I wasn't rambling, but it's a lot to try to tie up into a neat little bow that this all is happening for a reason at a certain time and that this is a warning. Now, I know it says that when you see 
Jerusalem, surrounded by armies, flee to the mountains. So, um, I don't know if there are any mountains around. I don't even know if this applies to us at this time. But I do see that we are in a very dangerous position right now. And that things are happening quickly. So, I guess I could sum it up in saying that, you know, what has been, will be, is is now. And that um, this is definitely the time to be seriously praying to the Father for direction, for discernment, and for courage. Because, you know, we're all going to need it. And, um, again, please like, share, and uh, subscribe. I don't think we have very much time left. And what I want to do is, for the little time we have left, I want to devote the videos I'm making. It may not seem like it. But I want to devote everything to survival. And uh, I mean spiritual survival, physical survival, emotional survival, just survival. Because I remember, um, you might remember the movie, The Color Purple, where I can't remember the people's names, but I remember the two sisters. And one sister told the other, Celie. I think that was Celie. Her sister said, well, you have to learn to fight. And she said, well, I don't know how to fight. All I know how to do is survive. So that's what I want to devote the rest of this to, to encouraging people to survive. So, of course, the first rule of survival is pray. Study the Most High. Find out what he wants you to do and then do it. Okay? And everything else follows from that. So, again like share subscribe if you have any questions or comments please uh leave them at in the comment box i do truly love you all not easy for me to say um you know but i do so um you guys have a wonderful day